This video contains spoilers for both The Witcher books and The Witcher 3's Blood and Wine expansion. In The Lady of the Lake, Geralt and his group of outcasts went to confront Vilgefortz and take back Ciri in Stega Castle. During this confrontation, almost all of Geralt's friends died, including the vampire Regis. Regis, along with Geralt and Yennefer, confronted Vilgefortz. Taking the shape of a huge bat like monster, Regis slashed Vilgefortz's face almost hitting the sorcerer's one good eye. As Regis went in for an attack in his human shape, to bite Vilgefortz's neck, his final words were, Beware, me, I didn't come here to beware, as Geralt tried to warn him. Vilgefortz seemed to be caught by Regis unbeknownst to the vampire, however, it was a trick, and the sorcerer tore Regis apart with burning hands. Vilgefortz pushed Regis against the column, and with white flames spewing from his hands, he melted the vampire and the column into one amorphous lump. This was the end of Regis in the books, but in The Witcher 3's Blood and Wine expansion, he makes a return. Yes, Geralt, it's me. Regis? Are you alright? All is well. All's in order. Wounds such as these heal on vampires in moments. But we've not seen one another in ages, my friend. At least in human terms, that is. How's this even possible? Last I saw you... I was a bubbling, shapeless smear, having been rather spectacularly melted into a column of a certain castle. In somewhat better shape now, as you can see. Hardly peak form, mind you, but were I human, folk would think me a demigod, I dare say. And tells us of how the vampire Detloff helped him regenerate. But there's a bit more to it than just time, and in the recent Gwent journey, all about Regis, we learned how he was truly resurrected. The Lord of Sorceresses was actively hunting down Vilgefortz. They were tricked at first into attacking the wrong location, and when they learned of Vilgefortz's death, they sent Kira Metz, Triss Marigold, and Sabrina Glavisic to investigate what had happened there, and to destroy the castle to hide any evidence. When the sorceresses arrived, they found the remnants of Regis, and they decided to try and revive him, to question him and learn more about what had happened. When Regis finally was in a state where he could be considered alive, he awoke with blind hunger and managed to escape from the lodge, under Sabrina's watch, who had underestimated him. It was later brought into question if Regis escaped alone or with the help of Dutlov. For a number of months, Regis was too weak to live on his own, and Detloff helped him get back on his feet. They moved around a lot, and for a while, they made their home in the bell tower in the town of Warford. At night, Detloff would fly over the city, and kidnap people from the streets to take them back to Regis. Detloff gave him blood. He would break his victims back, so they would not be able to defend themselves, as they fed on them. As the end of the year, 1268 came closer, Regin Detloff had an unexpected encounter with the Witcher named Sorensen, who was hired by Sabrina to take out Regis to tie up loose ends. After spending some time tracking the vampire down, Sorensen, who specialized in taking down vampires, took a contract on top of his already existing one to receive some extra coin for driving the vampire away from the bell tower. He used the choir as a distraction which would sing psalms to weaken the vampire, at least that was what they believed. In truth, they were just bait. That love came from down from the tower and fed on one of the singers while grabbing another one. Right when he was feeding and experiencing a kind of euphoria, Sorensen came into action. With a silver chain, he took down that love, who fell to the ground as the links twisted around his limbs. He tried to kill that love, but failed as that love flew away. With a silver crossbow bolt, he shot the vampire as he flew to the bell tower. The vampire crashed and quickly he and Regis fled, before Sorensen made his way up to the tower. Regis started to become more like its old self soon after. He was still very weak, but now he was in control of himself again, and he refused to drink human blood. Even when he came across a field hospital with dying people, Regis refused to be the one who ended their lives. During the time on the roads, Regis tries to get that love to see humans in a different light, to varying degrees of success. They joined up with two soldiers and a condottier who were carrying around a sergeant who was severely injured and at the brink of death. 
Regis helped them take care of the men. For three days they travelled together along the Yuruga River, until they came across a farm. By then, Regis had learned that the men they were travelling with were deserters, and that something wasn't right. The group tried to get the farmer to gift them his two horses and carriage, saying they needed them as they were part of the Marian army. Two of the soldiers, Ossian and Erskine, began to threaten the farmer, when Regis intervened by paying the farmer in a gold coin for one horse and a sleigh tied to it. The farmer accepted, and the group left soon after, Regis having barely managed to prevent the group from robbing the farmer and his daughter. The group was headed towards Dillingen, but to get there they had to cross the river Inna, which luckily for them was frozen over. As they crossed the ice, the Marian soldiers spotted them and headed towards them on the ice. One headed to a nearby fortress and the two other soldiers went on the ice to confront the group. Regis wanted to try and negotiate, but Ossian had already prepared a slingshot and knocked one soldier out. The other soldier grabbed the connoisseur, Neris, and he fell into a hole with her in the ice. Regis dove in after them, but he was still too weak and could not save Neris, which was when Detlov jumped in and got both the soldier and the connoisseur out of the water. When Detlov and Reach were back on the surface, the two deserters and the sergeant were nowhere to be found. Regis, Detlov and Neris went through the nearby forest to Fentkarn, where Regis had a hideout. At the hideout, Neris learned that Regis and Detlov were vampires. While afraid at first, she seemed to trust them. But Regis and Detlov weren't safe. Sorensen, the Witcher, was still on the hunt and had found out their trail once again, as he spoke to the farmer. The vampires had met earlier. He followed the sleigh tracks left behind by two deserters. The two deserters and the commissaire were not good people. They had taken the sergeant from the field hospital to learn the location of a secret stash of spoils that they wanted for themselves. The two soldiers were even prepared to kill for the treasure. However, Neris, the commissaire, only wanted the treasure and she wanted no one else to get hurt. The sergeant was starting to wake up and the two deserters tried to force information out of him about the treasure's location, which eventually he told them was near a sawmill a day's ride east of Dillinger. Meanwhile, Regis, Tetlov and Neris came across a group of villagers who had been kicked out of their homes by soldiers. Regis wanted to help them, and when Nanad fell, he used hypnosis to convince the soldiers to give the huts back to the peasants. This took a lot of energy from Regis, and he fainted. Sorensen would soon after learn the hypnosis and ask Sabrina for aid via Xenovox, which you might recognize from The Witcher 3, as Kira used it to talk to Geralt. To which Sabrina responded by giving him a dagger, imbued with a spell from Vilgefortz, possibly the same one which had melted Regis at Stiga. The spell was weaker than the original of Vilgefortz, as he didn't have the proper time and resources to repair it. When Regis awoke, Neris told him the truth about what she and the two deserters were planning. She asked the vampire for his help, and while she just wanted the gold, she knew that Ossian and Erskine would kill the sergeant once she had what they needed, and she knew that Regis wouldn't let an innocent man die. That laugh slid his own wrists in an ancient magical circle for vampire magic and let his blood flow in a bowl, which he fed to Regis to give him some strength. The two discussed why that love saved the Temerian soldier, and his reasoning was that it seemed like something Regis would do. And in a way, he tried to see the world a bit more like Regis. That love found Regis' attempt at helping humans intriguing. The vampires and Neris would arrive late at the sawmill. A few hours before, when the sun began to set, Erskine and Ossian learned that there was no treasure at the mill. The sergeant had simply lured them there because of the nearby mass graves which attracted necrophages. As night fell, the two deserters hid in the mill, while the sergeant died by ghouls, in his mind having the last laugh as he doomed the two betrayers. However, they were saved by Sorensen, who convinced them to help take down Regis and Detlov by promising them some of the ancient gold coins the vampires had on them. The two men accepted and laid in ambush. As the two vampires and Neris arrived at the mill, they found the body of the sergeant. They were too late, when suddenly a crossbow bolt fired and shattered Regis' arm, pinning him against the sleigh with the sergeant's body. 
Neres ran towards where the bolt came from, and that love transformed into a bet that overtook her. As the two went to find the arbalist, Sorensen drank his potion and attacked Regis. Regis freed himself and blocked the blow with his claws. He dodged the second blow, but the third one hit him in his lower leg. As Sorensen prepared to slice Regis' neck, the vampire shields himself with his hand, and the witcher sliced through his fingers instead. Regis lunged at Sorensen and wrapped his claws around his throat when the witcher dropped a salmon bomb, followed by Art, which blew the vampire away. Regis and the body of the sergeant were lying next to each other in the darkness as the witcher went for the killing blow. Regis was hurt badly and about to get killed by the witcher. With no other choice, he said he was sorry as he sank his fangs into the corpse next to him. With his strength back for a bit, Regis transformed into a bat monster, his vision blurred by red mist. Regis quickly overpowered the witcher and injured him. As he went for the final blow to drink the witcher's blood, he stopped himself. He did not want to kill the witcher and managed to control himself as he spared the monster slayer. Meanwhile, Detlaf confronted the two men. He quickly overpowered them and asked why they attacked. As Neris joined them, Ossian tried to tell her that they are vampires, which she already knew. She saw him looking at the dagger with the glowing runes lying on the ground, and she quickly grabbed it. She asked Detlaf if she could kill the two men for what they had done to the sergeant, but he gestured her to wait. Erskine and Ossian told them about how the sergeant had lied about the treasure, and they specifically told Neris that the vampires had the actual treasure with them. Detlaf was disappointed in the two when he learned that they had betrayed him for gold. And as he was preparing to feed on Ossian, Neris sunk the enchanted dagger into Detlaf's arm. He hissed as blue flames flared from the blade. As the flames engulfed his arm, Detlaf tried to pull it out, when Erskine shot a silver bolt in his other arm, pinning it to a tree. The silver prevented him from transforming, and he was stuck. Neris demanded double her original cut from the two men. As that laugh was burning, they asked him to throw the gold, which he did with the little movement he had left in his pinned arm. The three quickly started to fight over the gold, and they landed in a gully while fighting each other. That laugh had called upon the ghouls to help, unbeknownst to the three who were fighting nearby. One monster ripped the bolt from the tree with his jaws, as that laugh quickly tore off his burning arm. The sergeant had known those three best, and he knew what they deserved. Thus, he decided to honor his final wish, and unleash the ghouls. As dawn arrived, the two vampires talked to each other. Regis was unhappy with the fate of the three, even though he agreed they should be punished. That love was shocked, he spared the witcher, and the two decided to soon after part ways. That love had lost almost all the hope he had in humans, the hope Regis gave him, as he decided he had one more thing to do. Regis and Detlaf both went their own ways. Regis went to live near humans, having regained parts of his strength but still needing time. Detlaf, on the other hand, took the coins the three had fought over and went back to the farm, where he gave the daughter, Aina, two gold coins as he had lost the first one to the Witcher. Her kindness and hospitality showed him that there was still a bit of hope left. The Witcher Sorensen contracted Sabrina and told her he gave up on the contract and wouldn't kill Regis. As Sabrina cursed him, he threw the Xenofox into the river. Within a few days or weeks from these events, Sabrina Glavisic would be dead. She would rain fire down on a battle between Catwin and Adorn, and for her inobedience she would be executed. Presumably because of her failure with Regis, the Lords might not have wanted to try and help her, as she screwed up twice in a very short amount of time. That love would presumably make his way to Metina, not long after these events, where he would meet Rena, with whom he would have a relationship for a while, until she disappeared. He would be in contact still with Regis, from time to time over the following six years, until Geralt takes on a contract on that love, which forced Regis to choose between two friends. What exactly happened to the Witcher after the story is unknown. There is a lot we don't know about him, except that he seems to operate out of Angren mostly. Maybe in the future he'll make another appearance. The story took place during the first snows and colds of 1268, a few months after Lady of the Lake. And I'd like to take go and further explore the relationship between Detlaf and Regis, 
we get to know a bit more about vampires, and it kind of makes the choices in Blood and Wine have more meaning. But what do you think of the Lord's involvement in resurrecting Regis? Most likely they just sped up the process, which would otherwise have taken decades or even centuries. That love was still the one who gave him back his strength, and he saved him in a way, cared for him, and fed Regis his own blood with vampire magic. It still seems to mostly fit what we knew with Blood and Wine. But what do you think of the story? Till the next video. Bye. Does that sound at all familiar? How could it not? We just set off to rescue Ciri from Vilgefortz. Oh, our encounter with Vilgefortz. That is something I do not remember so fondly.